Well, hi guys, we're at Free Geeks Harvin. Uh, we're taking a, a little bit of an outage, found a quiet area, well, relatively quiet area, and I've managed to find three people from the RSGB. Going round my table from right to left, I'm leaving John to the end because I, he's new, and uh, but uh, I have Mr Stuart Bryant, who's uh, now the chairman of the RSGB, I believe. Yes, I retired from being president and I'm sort of got... Um asked to be the chair for a while all right across the table for me is mr steve thomas and uh, you're the general manager aren't you steve i am yeah morning morning a uh, shame we didn't bring heather with me with you but cause she's a lovely lady and she she does try and keep me in under control so yeah, today that, might that, be that's interesting quite, that's quite a job though, isn't it? yeah yeah very much <laughs> as as H hannah found out as well <laughs> and last but not least we have john uh, from a new uh, president, and John, you're from Northern Ireland. I am indeed, yeah. And I have to apologise to you because I'd not met you until a few minutes ago. Congratulations on getting the job of Thank president. Thank you. And uh, two years, is it, you're in the firing line? Two years line? in the firing oh, line, oh, yeah. 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 I'm not entirely new to the RSGB, having been chairman of the ETCC for 12 years before, so fairly... Well aware and uh, know a lot of people in the, in the society, in the volunteers, etc. Yeah, yeah. Well, you wouldn't get to your position if you didn't know a lot of people in the hobby. Well, probably And uh, as I say, um, it'll be an interesting role for you, I'm sure. As Stuart's probably clued you in. And, I'm uh, finding that out every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're very lucky to have John who uh, yeah. stood up for this job. Yeah. And I assume you'll be hopping back over the... Uh, the Irish Sea every now and again to see us. I think we will. Uh, yeah. Luckily, yeah. it's uh, quite an easy hop. Yeah. Well, I'd suggest you fly rather than come over on the ferry from Belfast because it's a 12 hour crossing or something silly. No, it's not. Oh, when I went out there last year, it was 12 hours or something. If you, ta if you take the right route, it's two and a quarter hours. But then you drive through Scotland. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, well, I, that would have probably been quicker. You probably crossed to Birkenhead. Oh, I did, which yeah. Which takes overnight, yeah, yeah during yeah. the day. Yeah, but it was an interesting trip and an enjoyable trip, and we spent some time in Northern Ireland. I operated as GI. Good, so. good. Sorry, MI. MI. <laughs> MI. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I enjoyed that very much, so, so uh, yeah. Where did you visit, can I ask? Yeah, you can. We, we, we went to Belfast as a, a staging point, uh, Colin, my eldest son, M6BOY, lives in Southern Ireland, so he came up, oh, yeah. and we met them with the family in Northern Ireland, who should come over the border, no problems, and we went up to the Giants Causeway. And Bush Mills, no doubt? Uh, probably. I, uh, it was a very quick few days over, but uh, we packed a lot in, mm -hmm. but uh, I remember the Giants Causeway, um, I remember lots of places where everybody got excited because uh, they filmed part of games of Crow. Of course. Oh. Thrones here and yeah. this there. The dark hedges and all those. Yeah, yeah, those sort places, of things. Yeah. So it was an interesting, very quick trip. We had a great um, afternoon cup of tea and a cake, as you always do in Ireland, oh, at a, a lovely little fishing village, which was absolutely picturesque, mm -hmm. and all sorts of things like that. So it was a... A very relaxing, quick few minutes. Well, they're always welcome. Anytime. Yeah, thank you. And at least I can operate over there, and so can Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. So, I think we, we got together the big news story of today, and this is the big one. Yeah. Ofcom have made some interesting announcements and put out a document for discussion. Yeah. I'm going to ask the question, and it's a loaded question, did you guys have anything to do with organising this, or is this an Ofcom uh, thing? No, it's, um, so as the National Society, we work with Ofcom all the time. Right? So uh, we like to think that we've had some influence in letting Ofcom know what modern radio amateurs want to do and what parts of the licence might get in their way. But we do that every day of the week. Right? So I think this is a culmination of a a lot of work that we do with Ofcom, um, but we they we knew that they wanted to simplify the licensing rules, but there's an opportunity there to bring it in line with what 
UK radio amateurs would like as well. So it's a, I think it's a combination of a lot of work that's been going on for years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been in the hobby, what, nearly 25 years. So I'm a youngster yeah. for a lot of people. But there have been a fair number of changes in that last 25 years. It, it is orga uh, organic almost. It, it changes as time goes on. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of big changes uh, of which... Okay, Stuart's going to beat me up in a minute for not reading the 110-page document <laughs> and, and, uh, and digesting it all. But there are some interesting things in there, some of which are going to excite people, some of which people are going, so what? Um, some of which will probably cause a bit of aggravation amongst people. I, I can understand why. Um, the, the, the one, for argument's sake... Do I become ME1 MRB? Uh, you know, is, is it's, that, optional. it's optional, but it's a very woke sort of thing of bringing us in line. What? what uh, why should the people be MW or M, MM? You know, so I can understand. It's trying to make a level playing field. Would you say? Well, you. I mean, if it, you you could not use your national identifier at all. That's also allowed. Um, so if you just want to use plain UK identifier, uh, as you do with, for example, GB calls, um, you, you, you're at liberty to do that in these new rules. But then that gets in the way of DXCC. Yeah. yeah. And, and we know that a lot of people that use the RSLs now are very passionate about using them yes. because it gives them a national identity. Absolutely. Yes. So it is, yeah. it, is very, it is very definitely a, a topic for discussion. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I was I, I was just throwing that one in because yeah. of thing, and I had a very silly moment just before I went to sleep last night, and it was a very silly moment, guys, and it probably isn't going to happen. But our special event stations are GB yeah. and yes. number XXX. Yeah, yeah. Driving out here, I was told my GB sticker on my car is no longer allowed. I had to change it to a UK. Yeah. Is there any move to make it UK? Mm, that is not, no, not no, that we know of. Um, the, you know, the, anyway, the people who own UK would probably yeah, um, object. That's right. Yeah. The, um, which, which country the, is that? Ukraine. Yeah, right. Um, so the, everything that's in that consultation document yeah. is what's on the table now. Um, but there is some simplification in mm. the special event mm. call sign area as well. I don't know if you've spotted that. Yeah, um, we had but, but there is some things that Ofcom are proposing there as well, to try and simplify mm. things again. That's the overriding mm. theme through mm. this. Mm. It's simplifying the administration um, overhead that Ofcom might have, but trying to make, trying to take away all the, the sort of mysterious things that have mm. been included in the license over the years. Uh, and in some cases, people can't understand why they were there in mm. the first place, or either Ofcom or very often ourselves, spent a lot of time trying to explain what the licence meant. So this is a simplification of that, as well as Ofcom, I think, trying to smooth, smooth their administration. Role. And they're, they're rewriting their yeah. software as well, their licensing software, and obviously yeah. they want to keep it as simple as possible yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of the things I remember, and, and this mm. could be something we, mm. as amateurs mm. around the table here, mm. push for, you know, I, I teach the foundation yeah, intermediate yeah. course saying yeah. I would do the, the, the full if, if we could get the hall long enough. When I came into the hobby, it wasn't Ofcom, it was the Radio Authority, and you had three licensing documents. Mm. And they were written a lot clearer yeah. so that a foundation license holder knew they could do this, this, and this. Yeah. And then you got the next license, you read that book, and you could do this, this, and this. Mm. Whereas today we have one license book. Do you, do you mean BR68? Or are you going back? <sighs> going back to BR68. BR68, yeah. Right, yeah. BR68 was far easier yeah. to understand mm. from somebody new coming into the hobby. Whereas the current documentation, for argument's sake, on Maritime Mobile, one minute it says all amateurs allow ma 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 mobile. So if the person doesn't get past that page, and they should, obviously, and then about 10 pages further in it says, oh, you can only do that if you're a full license holder. Well, but it's... Yeah, it's the, there's 
there's the license terms and conditions that you mm. can download from the Ofcom website now, and then there's a document that explains the license yeah, terms yeah. and conditions. But that's a really good illustration of why they want to simplify it. Yeah, to oh. try and reduce that yeah. that complexity. Well, that is their goal, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, in particular, maritime mobile. I'm sure that the, all the complexity around that would just disappear. Mm. Yeah, and it, and it probably should. I mean, in fairness, you ask the ship's master, "Can I do it?" And he'll yep. say, "Yes, no." That's and what it says in the new in the new consultation document. Yeah. Um, mm. I think you can only do it if you're full. Yeah. Um, but they don't really care what the suffix is anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And in fairness, uh, you know, the suffix is, hasn't been mandatory for a good few years, has it? No. Mm. no so uh, lots of things haven't been mandatory. You still get the old boys, of which I'm becoming one very yeah. quickly, that, that will argue, you don't do this or you're supposed to do that. Mm, the yeah. other. And I've had this discussion about you've got to give your call sign every 15 minutes. No, you haven't. Mm. I mean, we've, we've got a repeater. We've got a repeater that so, uh, is a uh, analogue and digital. Mm -hmm. It can't give a K tone, mm -hmm. it and it can't give its ident mm -hmm. yeah. um, every so many minutes. So we have to program that in. But there's certain things we're moving on and think if you're so, right, yeah. changes. So I, th I think a lot of this is technology that's done this. So it used to be that you had to give your location and your call sign regularly because that was the only way they could find out who you were and where you were. Yeah. Modern uh, tech, DFing technology is so efficient now that if they want, if, that if uh, they want to know where your station is, uh, it's relatively easy to find. Yeah, yeah. Well, just as a quick aside, I, I know Chris was driving down here with his camper van. Uh, going off at the side, you guys may not be aware of it. We have a digital talk group. Oh, I'm aware oh, yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been on it. All right. I've yeah, I know. I've worked I on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Chris was chatting to one of uh, our Australian listeners, yeah. uh, driving through Europe, mm -hmm. but Chris was also beaconing APRS for yeah. him, and he was tracking it. And, yeah. and, and that's it's a really interesting point, because some of our discussions with Ofcom that we have all the time is all about what modern radio amateurs want to do, um, and what they would like to do, and... Is that other things in the license that stop them doing that? That's yeah. a really good thing to bear in mind as you read the document. Mm. I think yeah. it's we're back to those two things: the admin and the simplification of it. Um, but where radio amateurs can benefit from that if they read the consultation is by by looking for the things that help them or stop them, depending on how they view the consultation, doing what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, and that's a really good mindset, I think, as you go through. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we are going to produce some guidance. I mean, remember, that we saw the document for the first time yesterday as well. Um, but we're going to produce some guidance as to what we think, you know, the, the right mix is. But everybody should reply to this consultation individually. I, because, I think so. you know, Ofcom are taking uh, input from all radio amateurs mm. at this stage. Yeah. This, as you say, this is important that everybody who has a licence respond to Ofcom. And I'm going to put my neck on the line and say, regardless whether you're an RSGB member or not, you've got to do this because, I mean, because when we talked about power line problems, yeah. I think it was only about three people ever bothered to talk to tell you off come they had power line problems. Yeah. We know there's power line problems out there. You can't sit around and do nothing. Yeah. Is where, where I'm going on that one. This is, but this is definitely an opportunity for radio amateurs, all radio amateurs in the UK, mm. to comment on this document. Right? Yeah. Now, there's some nice things in here uh, that certainly foundation licence holders and intermediates are going to thoroughly enjoy. Yeah. Uh, I believe there's some power increases. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, I believe uh, intermediate... Sorry, I believe foundation licence holders are getting a maximum of 20 watts. Mm -hmm. I... I, I you have to Go be on. careful because they're not. A, it's one watt on the gigahertz bands. They've just been yeah, allocated yeah. twenty watts elsewhere. Yeah, but it's, it, it, there's always been uh, a slight. You're right there. Mm. There's always been um, on a couple of frequencies they didn't have ten watts, yeah. from my memory. Yeah. Um, but their maximum, or let's say the maximum power 
on some of the bands they, will be they 20. didn't used to have 2.4 and 5 they didn't no. and <laughs> those are quite important uh, bands to have allocated yeah. for example QO100 uplink is on um, 2.4 Four. Yeah. yeah so it's nice we'll bring them into line yeah. the, the other one is I believe intermediates are going to have a maximum of 100 watts mm -hmm. yes depending yeah. on where yeah. uh, on uh, yes it's 100 it's, watts yeah, yeah. Three, 3, 3 dB for the both it's yeah 3 yeah. dB increase yeah. for yeah. both yeah and being a QRP operator, I'm going to sleep here. <laughs> <laughs> I believe full license holders get uh, are potentially going to be given a kilowatt. Yeah. On, on some bands, bands, the, on some bands, bands where yeah. we've got a primary, primary allocation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where where we've got a secondary allocation, it's still going four hundred. Yeah, or well, less depending on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the it, I mean. I, I I hold a full US license, yeah. one and a half kilowatts, and I think I've used a maximum of five watts when I've been in the States. So it's not something that's going to... No. But it, for people that are interested, and it's but, it's good. But the really important thing here is everybody's got to remember the EMF calculations as oh. well. right? So that might be the limiting factor. It's more likely to be the limiting factor mm. for, for a lot of stations. Yeah. Um, so the EMF calculation still applies... So you have to work out whether it's actually safe to operate at those levels. Yeah. And I think it was the EMF uh, introduction of the EMF stuff that allowed them to think yeah, about going above 400 so. watts. Yeah. And we really have to thank the work of the EMC committee uh, for, the, for the outstanding work they did in making it easy for anyone yeah. to do their EMF calculation. Yeah. Yeah, so RSGB EMC committee yes. works with Ofcom very closely on yes. you know, how to actually measure... Yes. Um, <laughs> fields yes. and then created the software that is now available on our website for everybody uh, so not just our RGB no. members but for everybody that's just to help amateurs do the the calculations necessary but that is that is hugely important with these power level changes John I haven't involved you very much mm -hmm. in what, okay. what, <laughs> what excites you the most about this new announcement by Ofcom Probably the change in NOVs or the lack of NOVs. Uh, we'll wait to see how that works out, but uh, it would appear, for instance, 5 watt gateways generally don't need an NOV, etc. Temporary repeaters. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out and make sure that we don't get a complete uh, free for all. That's, that's the main thing. Though there still will be coordination, uh, especially for the high power repeaters. So looking carefully at those sorts of things. But that, those are very interesting because it changes the way we, we do things. It certainly does. Uh, I mean, there's there's NOVs. What if I remember right? I don't do much HF, but uh, five uh, sixty meters. There's NOV at uh, two meters from one four six to one four seven. Those will remain. Yeah. That's just the, that's the same. Yes. Yeah. So and the um, there's one for four meters as well. Four Seventy point yeah. five. I would. Mm. And above, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Extended so, four meter band. Yeah. 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 Those will remain. Those NOVs remain. Yeah. In the application process. There's, we it, think they'll just. Yeah, but in the future, there, there's no guarantee that we'll actually get those those um, allocations no. extended because Ofcom always do it on a yearly renewal yeah. basis so we never know in advance and 146 and upward is prime spectrum so yeah, it, is. it may yeah. well disappear at yeah. some point yeah yeah, yeah. but it's, mean, been a, it's been a great place for people to experiment there's mm -hmm. been a lot yeah. of uh, digital activity in that in that space yeah, digital ATVs yeah. yes been yeah. going very well there. yeah yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's some interesting times. I'm sure that there's uh, another one in there that I really want to on. mention. I think which um, I really hope people like, and that's the supervised operation, right? Because there's a tremendous opportunity. There's been confusion in there for years. You know the the old idea that you have to be in control of the radio and somebody can pass a greetings message, but you're holding the mic. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's always caused lots of discussion, isn't it, about what the mm. what the <laughs> regulation actually yeah, means. Yeah. And now they're saying that you know you can actually supervise somebody else using the radio. So we've got an opportunity for scout <laughs> events and STEM events yeah. and anything just to introduce people to radio. And you can put them in on, you know, on the microphone, they can use the PTT yeah. themselves, they can um, you know, do everything you could do under your supervision. Which is absolutely great because that's exactly what the American license does with their go-to stations mm -hmm. at field day. Yeah. Yeah. That means we can do very similar things. Yeah. Yes. It also means I can make Mrs. B operate. There we go. <laughs> 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 she doesn't want to. So, but I think that, that opens up um, outreach activities, doesn't yeah. it, for 
for everybody, clubs doing it, you know, individuals doing it, whatever. It it just allows us to show people amateur radio. It certainly does because, in many ways, in many ways, amateur radio used to be quite strange. In that, if I wanted to learn how to fly a plane, I flew the plane with an instructor. If I want to learn to drive, I drive the car with an instructor. But I do all the work with instructor supervising. And then you've got amateur radio. You can't do it unless you've got a license. Yep. Which is kind of silly in this day and age. Yeah. Well, it's bringing that all into line with modern practice. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's the good thing, yeah. I think, on that one. So, uh, Aeronautical. Remote control. Remote control. Aeronautical. 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 Aeronautical, yeah. yeah. I, I did have a number of students that joined the class mm. Uh, thinking they could do aeronautical. One of them was uh, flying model planes, and oh, yeah, I could yeah. do amateur radio with it. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, TV and yeah. cameras. Angler and and people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and but there's a half-watt balloon. Balloon. restriction. Yeah. High altitude balloons, balloons and things like that. Yeah. As well. There's a half-watt yeah. restriction, though, on aero. Well, yeah. we, you know, you're not going to get everything straight away. No, 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 um, no, 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 no. Let's be sensible about it. It yeah. goes a long way, half yeah. a watt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Ten milliwatts goes yeah. a long a way. A long way. So yeah. there, there is just this discussion we've had for however long it's been. It just shows there is so much in this document that people need to go and read. Yeah, I mean, we're only going to scratch the surface today. We, yeah, absolutely. in fairness, but I think I think it's a positive time for amateur radio. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think we're going to get. We could get more people into the hobby. Yep. Oh, there's much, there's a huge scope for getting more people into the hobby. Um, you know, the four by the four by four people, for example. Um, you can imagine putting up a temporary repeater for them to yeah. do their exercises. Yeah. Um, you, you know, there are so many things you can imagine. Um, 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 doing with other groups and getting them interested in amateur radio and hopefully getting them to become radio amateurs themselves. I think so. But, the, but and this is the big butt, boys, and it's not around this table, but we do have a lot of people in our hobby, and if you're listening, guys, it might be you who put off the foundation license holders, who rip them straight away. Guys, you and it, I have talked about this many times. Haven't yeah, we? guys, it's a hobby. Yeah. We yeah. should be fun. If an amateur, if a foundation license holder is not operating correctly, do not shout at them. Politely advise them, yeah. help them. You know, the, the very best thing you can do is welcome them into our yeah. radio, and then they might stay. Yeah, nobody's going to die no. if if they don't issue their correct course or they get the course on all fumbled up. Yeah. I mean, and I'm sorry to say this, boys, mm. round this table, if you three were on calling CQ mm -hmm. yeah. and there was an M7, I'd work the M7 first. Oh, I do too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because they need the practice. They've, yeah. got to, yeah. they've got the fire in their belly. I, I think I've said to you before, the best contacts I have is when somebody says, oh, this is my very first contact. Oh, okay. right? mm -hmm. That's it. That's a result. And I'm, I'm holding up the pile up or whatever at that point yeah. and having a good chat with them. Why not? It's, and, it's and what we, you need to do. And we do all those things, and it's good for the hobby. Yeah. So, uh, and and yeah. don't criticise people for things that are not important. I mean, um, every, my, I made thousands of mistakes when I was uh, uh, learning. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's not important, then they'll gradually learn anyway. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, nowadays, we don't have to issue our call sign at, at the end of every over. No. I still, when I teach the, or talk to foundation licenses, I say, look, you don't have to do it. However, if you want to get contacts with somebody outside the UK who English may not be their first language, yeah. they understand there is a set protocol of their, their call sign, your call sign at the end of an over. Yeah. So if they lose the track of what you're saying... They know you've passed it yeah. back to them. Yeah, it's good yeah. practice. Yeah. It's good practice. Mm. And I said, and if you get into that practice, there's no mm. reason why you shouldn't do that on VHF or UHF or a repeater. Mm. This What's is, the problem? This is all about welcoming people into mm. amateur radio, mm. though, yeah. isn't it? But well, we were all welcomed when we started, mm. um, and we've got to do exactly the same and look for even more people because 
the, there's especially with the new license changes that are coming along it may be easier to introduce it to people we've then got the existing amateur community have then got to welcome those people that come oh yes right we really have yeah um, otherwise we will suffer in the future yeah I I, I heard it a long time ago hmm. in that it's very very uh, when I did my license it was very much different it yeah. was difficult I had to write X pages and I turn around to people and say I don't care what you did. No. Today, you have to do this. Yeah. You, it's no good bitching about how well, it's different. Today's this. Yeah. Very quickly, and I'm going off at a tangent, but very quickly, I got stuck to do a club presentation many years ago. Yeah. We got let down at the last minute. Mm. Very let down at the last minute. So we turned up at the club, and I said, I'll, I'll organise a quiz evening. And I got my foundation questions out yeah and our foundation uh, mm. examples and we split said right split yourself into groups and all the G3s went and sat in one corner of G4s mm. and all the foundation lasses over here and uh, this is going to be a piece first question went up on the board what's that all about I start hearing from some people yeah. because the hobbies moved on yeah right mm. yeah. by three questions in the groups have reorganised. Yeah. Like the, the boys have grabbed the foundation license yeah. in, which was great. Yeah. And then by about question eight, it turned into a total giggle. Okay. Uh, there was a block diagram of a trans, uh, trans a receiver up on the board, and it yeah. said, you know, um, I can hear lots of stations at the same time. Is it the audio amplifier, the detector, or the oscillator, yeah. or the front end? Yeah. And some bright spark shouts in the back. There's an 80 meter contest on, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it did generate into a giggle. Yeah. But what that did for our club, what it did for our club was it gave respect for all licenses. Yeah. And at that yeah. point in time, nobody no. got upset no. with the with the foundation license holders. And I think that's people have to understand. It's yeah. a different time. Yeah. But in a way, there's nothing new under the sun. I remember as a very young new GI4 coming on the air, and like everyone else, you were very keen and you did a lot of operating your own. And a guy coming on, an older G3, uh -huh. saying, Oh, he's never off the air and all the rest uh -huh. of it. Just like we do, some people do with the the, uh, the foundation licensees now. Uh -huh. And someone else came on and said, You shouldn't do that. Uh -huh. You know, and, and actually, he was told off. Rather than me, so yeah. in a way, there's young people, new call signs coming in there, tend to get criticised. Yeah, yeah, and simply because they're keen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, indeed. Yeah. yeah, let them over it. Yeah, yeah. That's what's wrong. I think people are frightened because of that. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, we we hear some fantastic stories when people take the exams. You know, because we get to, you know, we send the certificate to them when they pass and everything like that and that is when they are most enthusiastic they've just passed the exam mm -hmm. yeah. so that's the point where they need help support yeah. Yeah. And, and you know more encouragement yeah. to carry on and if they could trodden on the go off and never yeah, come back they, on of course yeah. Yeah. because when they just pass their license they want to do dc to light on every band in oh, yeah. every mode yeah. and yeah. whatever yeah. Yeah. and you have to quietly take them aside and say you have limitations where you live. Your yeah. garden is only four yeah. foot long or whatever. I, I think that's one side, but there's another side that pass the exam and then wonder what they've got to do next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so they, you know, they bought a handheld. What else can I do? And we know that there's a whole world of, you know, activities that you can do. And sometimes just helping people through finding what their niche is going to be. Yeah, yeah. you do find that don't you over the yeah. years you you find a niche and then it, it might change in a few mm. years yeah. we, we've but, all moved on yeah. but helping people when they first come in as to what they might want to do or what they might mm. want to try oh, is, yeah. a, is a really big yeah. thing there's that more people can do than a cheap handheld yeah absolutely yeah. 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 yeah and as I say I've, I've spoken to lots of people uh, there is a big market and I know we go major off topic and this is really a discussion but well, just by way of a change right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always do Steve but in fairness if one of my big bugs about spe um, doing uh, not special event stations but demonstration stations you go to a, com a fight right I know where you're going you do because <laughs> we've had this discussion many times but you go to a, a big fight 
and somebody will put an amateur radio station on. There'll be two old boys sitting there screaming and hollering at, at, at uh, the rig with a back to the public, yeah. right? Now, what then happens is, if you're a parent with a young child and you walk down the aisle and you look at this and you look at two, three thousand pounds worth of gear sitting on the table... Yeah. And, you, and little Johnny goes, oh, I want to do that, or his sister yeah. does. Yeah. And you're going, hang on a minute, they got the retention, they'll get bored with that in a month. Yeah. I'm not spending that sort of money on it. We're better off at demonstration events yeah. having something like a Baofeng UV5R, and I know I'm going to get yeah. three million emails over that, <laughs> but something in that yeah. cost ba- bracket yeah. and working a repeater because... People's ears are tuned in to VHF and yeah, FM, FM transmission. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. not yeah. tuned in to sideband, so yeah. it's just a noise to them. Yeah. And well, we, we, we have this very much at the National Radio Centre, mm-hmm. um, that we've got we, we've got a high end station there as well, so we can demonstrate that you can talk to people the other side of the world. But we've also got um, you know satellite systems, so you can actually see that, and we've got a repeater running there as well, so you can see that. And we've got some beginners level equipment so they can see that. But the, I think the very most important thing we do is we have people there to talk to the, the visitors. So if there is somebody operating the station, that's an interesting background, but they get the most out of the interaction with somebody there who's talking and describing what's going on yeah. and you know, answering questions. That's the bit that we find really gets people's attention. So you can be attracted by the flashing lights and the you know yeah. the, the long distance stuff, but actually having the opportunity to ask somebody and talk about it and tune the conversation to what they're interested in. Oh yeah, because um, we, we never know who's going to walk through that door. And on busy days at the NRC, we see 500 people a day. Yeah, right. So you never know whether they were involved in something at Bletchley or you know they've got a radio history or they're completely new to it. Yeah. But having somebody to talk to them and answer questions is where I thought you were going to go with mm. the special event station. Well, that as well. You know, but very uh, definitely. But, yeah. uh, but, it, but it's got to be tuned, doesn't it, yeah. to the person who's who might have an interest in something which isn't necessarily what you're showing, but there's still an opportunity to talk uh, to you. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think that um, the video game aspect of some of the things like FT8, which I know a lot of people dislike, yeah. but it is just like playing a video game. Mm. And a lot of people who are new to amateur radio are used to playing video games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, it's a bit like what I'm doing at the moment with a digital group of bringing people together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm told by a lot of people that ain't real radio. Yeah. Am I having fun? Am I using a radio? Yes. As far as I'm concerned, if there's a photon involved, it is radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and in fact, what you do, you remember we're in the press centre, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what you do is different to what the traditional press was, wasn't it? You know, oh, when, yes. When press, was, when press started, you know, newspapers, everything like that, but you're here in the press centre because what you do is the modern version. Yeah. That is a really good analogy with amateur radio, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a good one. Listen, we're going off at a tangent, and I know you've got other things to do later on. Uh, very quickly, let's go back to the original announcement. Mm. Anything you really want to cover that I've missed... I don't think so. We covered aeronautical, didn't we, at the end? We did. Um, there are there are some things in there about licensing yeah. and people holding call signs that is going to take a bit of reading, I think, mm, yes. a bit more reading. Oh, okay. That's all about simplifying the the number of licenses that are held. Yeah. Uh, that that's a bit that I think I don't want to use don't want to use the word contentious, but I think there will be varying views or differing views on on that so the number of call signs you can only hold one call sign an individual can hold one call sign at one exam one uh, license level yeah um and you may have to choose which one you keep if you've got you know two or three full licenses for some reason yeah yeah um and you know there's there's things about being able to change your call sign um, uh, there's all sorts of things in the call sign allocation. The new I think, prefixes for yeah. the M8. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. M8 and M9 so, yeah. for the intermediate, for instance. Yeah. But but the call sign area, it, I think there'll be differing views, and I think that's an yeah. important thing uh, for people to. Yeah, focus there on. there is things in that, and I, 
in fairness, as much as people get upset, one call sign's enough. Yeah. Uh, in f- yeah. yeah. If you, More for clubs, of course. I think clubs are five, five, yeah. Five, yeah. So, I mean, one call sign's enough. If I want to be a QRP operator, I can still use a full licence call sign. Why do I have to hold an, um, a foundation so, licence? There's something we haven't really talked about, and, and it was a surprise to us, I think, which is that foundations can now build things. And we talked about the excitement of your first contact. Yeah. Right? yeah. It wasn't the first contact that excited me. It was, the fir- it was the fact that that first contact was on a radio that I had built from components. Yeah. And I think this gives us an opportunity yeah. to get people who are just into radio into that excitement that we used to have, which is, if you've got a license, I've built this from a pool of, yeah, uh, yeah. of it, be that hardware these days, or in those days, or software uh, now, and you can have all the excitement of that contact with that thing that you constructed yourself. I think, I think. I mean, okay, I'm going off at a tangent this way. There are people in this hobby that are foundation license holders who are far more technical than me yeah. and far cleverer than me. And I'm being honest about this. I've taught them, yeah. uh, and, and they get most. They're bored out their brains. But their company said, "You go get an amateur radio license," yeah. you know. And I've said, "I've got to teach you the syllabus." However. I think it really does come down to the individual. If you feel comfortable, if you have the knowledge, then you should build. Yeah. And this is going to be a difficult one to legislate. If you have no knowledge and you can't solder, and for God's sake, don't look at YouTube because 90% of people on YouTube can't solder, uh, you, you've got to accept that there will be some who can do it. Yeah. And I've met some full licensees who... Yeah should never be allowed to build a, a radio. And I'm, I'm not... Yeah. yeah. So it's a difficult one. It's a very exciting one. Uh, but all but I it, say to people... Remember I said it, it, this is about taking away the barriers yeah. and the complexity. So yeah. instead of having to try to find some kit that relates to IR 2028 regulations, and yeah. that, that's gone. Right? That, that, it's just simple now. Yeah. You, can, you can build things. Yeah. So we're back to the... the exams being there just to make sure that you are safe yeah safe to experiment safe to operate mm. that sort of thing and that's, and that's what we're back to we're yeah. back to the back to the basics right? yes and i think i think if if a person is not competent or not confident in their ability of building something if they're unsure or they don't have the test gear to check for things like harmonics and that yeah. The clubs are the ideal thing. There's always somebody in a club that can help you. So, so absolutely, clubs are a great resource. Yeah. Um, and the other big, big difference is when you know we were all uh, first licensed. Spectrum analyzer was you know the gold standard. You could never ever have you dreamt about it, you? Now, seventy pounds will buy you a perfectly respectable spectrum analyzer that can tell you whether you're in band or not. The tiny SA, lovely. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, um, and, and, and we know the trajectory of the test equipment is to drive down the costs, and yeah. so a lot of the barriers, you know, I didn't have an oscilloscope until you know, for ages. Now yeah. they're cheap as chips. Yeah, but I remember when I came into the hobby. You had to have an absorption wave meter to prove that you it hadn't got the harmonics. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Now that that was what twenty five years ago. Yeah. Testing your emissions from time to time. Time to yeah. time. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So you know, lots of these things have gone by the wayside. But as you say, I think the most important thing is simplification. Yes. And in fairness, as long as you're not causing interference out of the band. Mm and potentially not causing interference to people, your own colleagues in the band, everybody's going to be leave you alone in many ways. And it's a matter of educating people in that Mm. scheme. Yeah. 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 So we, we're looking forward to finding out what people actually think about the consultation. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, because we saw the document for the first time when it was published. Yesterday, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Uh, but as I said, we, we talk to Ofcom all of the time. So we like to think there's some influence that's gone all the way through the, you know, the last X number of years that's gone into this. Um, but we, the feedback we've seen, and you've probably seen, been watching it as well since yesterday when it was published, is predominantly positive right people have seen lots of things they say mostly positive i'm a bit concerned about this area you know and 
There will be areas where every one of us around this table could pick a hole in it yeah. and say, that doesn't mm -hmm. suit me. Yeah. What we have to look at is generally as radio amateurs, yeah. it appears, this document appears to be a major step forward and a very positive major yeah. step forward. The language it's written in is very positive towards amateur radio. Indeed. Yeah. I know that Ofcom are probably trying to save money, once again, very fair. And let's be honest, we don't pay for our license. Yeah, in other countries you do. And so we can't complain about a very positive document, in fairness. But Ofcom do take amateur radio seriously. And yes. We have that relationship with them as the National Society, which is a, a very privileged position, I have to say. But they do discuss things with us. We absolutely do lobby them on all sorts of subjects. And they take notice. This this is part of the result of that. It really yeah. is. Uh, uh, and we, yeah, we, we try and support every aspect of the hobby. Yeah. Uh, you know, no special interests. We're yeah. interested in, the, in trying to assist everyone to enjoy amateur radio yeah. and to learn about technology and to learn about operating. It's okay. all about enjoyment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the future of amateur radio, it's, I think it helps that. I yeah, do. I do. It future proofs it, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Yeah, um, you are very welcome. Yeah, as I was just say, it's a, it's a pleasant little chat in this area. <laughs> it's. Uh, I know you'll be out on the floor in a minute uh, yeah. amongst uh, all of us. Yeah. But um, thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to thank Stuart. Thank you for having us. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Steve. Thank you. And John. Thank you, Mark. And it's a pleasure. John, you're coming on board as a team.